house, sweet bitches. Shane Smith's in the house. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan podcast by night, all day. You guys started this, you were doing a, a magazine called Voice? Yeah. And then you took it over and took the O out and just called it Vice? Yeah, it was, it was called Voice of Montreal. And it was, a, it was sort of a welfare project in Canada uh, run by Haitians. And they were doing a, a Black History Month thing, and they, they figured they could get more money out of the government by doing an English language cultural publication. And so <clears throat> we were all working there. I wanted to be a writer, so I was like, I finally got a job. <laughs> and meanwhile, Quebec was trying to separate from the rest of Canada, so like English language publications became illegal. So, like, you know, no audience. And uh, so anyway, eventually they couldn't pay us our wages and stuff, so we said, okay, well, we own it now. So we dropped the O and just called it Vice. And like, everyone's like, what a great name. How would you think it up? fucking name. How would you think it up? And we're like, we just dropped the O, you know? It's, and, a, it's and, a perfect story. Yeah, and then we, st we moved to the States, and then we, then we st ex started expanding, and now we're in 34 countries. And where are you guys based out of? You're based out of New York? New York and London are two, our two hubs, and we're, our, our biggest office next year is going to be in China. And how long have you been doing this? 16 years. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm old, man. God damn. And now it's music. It's, you even have a clothing line and like yeah. everything now. It's yeah, like we have a, a record huge. label and films and TV and uh, wow. mag and online and all our different verticals and events. And That's awesome. And was this a plan from the very beginning to branch off in all these different directions or it just sort of naturally happened? Yeah, no. There was, uh, we never had a business plan. We never knew anything. We never <laughs> thought about it really. What happened was... Uh, you know, we wanted, they outlawed English basically in Quebec, so we, we went national in Canada. We we're the biggest magazine in Canada, but that was like being the biggest magazine in Reykjavik or something. We're the number one podcast in Canada. Really? <laughs> hey, Canada. <laughs> All right. <laughs> love Canada. Canada's I do good. too. I love Canada. Yeah, I'm, that's where I'm going to move if shit gets bad. Yeah, Vancouver. That, well, when, I came real close in 2004. I was looking at space in Vancouver. Really? Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to, you got to go to the, because it's going to get real bad. You got to get to like one, there's, north of where I grew up in Ottawa, there's like a million lakes. You can just buy a lake for like a hundred bucks. You got to buy a lake and, you know, build a cabin on the lake because when shit gets bad, you got to get far away from the cities. When shit gets that bad though, you might want to just die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to live like in Liberia, you know? I don't want to. I don't want to live, like live that. on I'd rather really take a bullet. Yeah. I'd rather take a bullet than live like that, a, a stump. OD on <laughs> Flintstone. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you can, Brian. Yeah, you can. I think that's a rumor. Um, so, you, you, so you guys started now. How did you get started from going from a magazine to these incredible, in-depth, yeah. on-scene investigative pieces that you're doing? Well, what was the first one? Heavy Metal in Baghdad. So um, we... For about a decade, we were kind of a style mag, so we were really just interested in cocaine and supermodels and <laughs> denim. <laughs> denim. <laughs> and so, like, but why? These, these jeans are weird. And uh, we had, it was because it was fun. It was a lot of fun, and we were kids. And, and, uh, and then when we started expanding around the world, we're like, holy oh, shit, it's fucked up. Like, holy fuck, have you, have you seen this? You know, and... and and we'd write about it, and people were like, I've never heard about that. What the fuck's going on? We're like, yeah, it's crazy. So that happened as well as the sort of failure of mainstream media during, um, you know, the Iraq you know, war um, with everyone saying, like, weapons of mass destruction, just lying, and they knew that there was no weapons of mass destruction and all this shit. And so um, we did a, a thing where we went to, uh, we snuck into Iraq, um, and we went to... Uh, hang out with the only heavy metal band in Baghdad, across the Cauda. And it was supposed to be like a seven-minute piece. It was the first piece we launched VBS with. And, um, you know, eventually we shot them over three years and we turned it into a feature film that won Critics' Choice in Toronto. It won Best Documentary in Berlin Film Festival. Like, it got picked up by the BBC, by Canal Plus. By, you My know, friend Eddie raves about it. Eddie Bravo raves about that movie. And so all, everyone's like, you know, oh, that's like news. 
you know, we're like, we're following a band, but you saw the whole thing unfold, like how everything was fucked up and shit. And people could relate to it because like, oh, I'm in a band. And then their band gets, their uh, practice space gets bombed by a Scud missile. And, you know, they, they, they're, they're going to be killed because they wear like Iron Maiden t-shirts or like they headbang, which is seen as Jewish. So therefore <laughs> they'll cut your head off and shit. And so <clears throat> that was the first thing. And it was so successful that, and we love doing it that we started saying, well, why don't we, the whole, everyone's like, what's your, been your demo and what's your business plan and all this shit? And we're just like, we have none. All we do is stories that we like. So if, we, if, if there's a story like General Butt Naked in the Tupac Army, that's a fucking jaw dropper. We're going to go shoot that, you know? And so we started shooting it and people were like, I've never heard anything like this. What the fuck? And so more and more and more people started watching and, and, and we started doing it more and more. If I have any criticism is that sometimes it's hard to find shit. Like, you have a bunch of different shows on Vice.com. Yeah. There's so many different ones. Like, I was trying to find Heinmo's Adventure, the yeah. dude who lives up in the Arctic, yeah. who lives in, like, East Alaska. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't find it. I had to Google it and then find it through Google. Yeah, we suck. We're only good at... <laughs> I couldn't find it on your website. <laughs> it's not, it's not on Netflix anymore, either. We're, we're only good at one thing. We're good at making content. We're not good at anything else. Yeah, so. but someone should be good at doing that for you. Well, we this dude to, here, look at this fucking thing. Yeah, this, this is the we master. Need, we need to steal him and have him come hey. over. Fucking, yeah. <laughs> He's not going to the Congo, bro. Trust me. You <laughs> no. don't want anybody crying in your lap. <laughs> no, I would be the crier. I'd be the... <laughs> you could throw me out, though, first. So I'd be eaten first, I guess. He would definitely be eaten first. He's fleshy, <laughs> and he won't even run. He'll just... No, I'll cry. He's like a rat it with epilepsy <laughs> just fall and start shaking in a little soft, I'd probably fluffy survive. bundle i'd probably survive though they'd be like oh i'm not gonna eat that you thing. come back with abs <laughs> hardened doing chin-ups in the jungle it would totally change well the life. most hugely strong dudes i've ever seen in my life actually were in liberia because they don't have water so they do this thing where they go way out into the like the outskirts in the jungle and they fill up these like two-ton wooden carts with water and one guy pushes and one guy pulls her two or three and they just up and down these hills all day long. They don't eat anything. And they just push like two tons up a hill, two oh tons down a hill. God. And they're just fucking massive. Like, it's like Conan, you know. He pushed the wheel yeah. for ten years. Yeah. You know? Well, that's these kind of dudes. Just fucking massive dudes. Wow. Anyway. What a fucking insane place on earth that is. Yeah. I just can't. I, I'll never be able to get over the fact that that exists right while this exists, you know. And we could be. This one. No one wants to put their head there, but you could have been born there, man. That yeah. could have been your shitty roll of the dice. True. You could have been shit out in the bottom of a hut, in in the middle of Liberia. Yeah. Just as easily as you could have in Montreal. Yeah. Fuck. So you start out. You do this Baghdad thing. And then how did it, how does it branch out into what you have now? Because now you guys have. You know, I mean, yeah. Thailand and Liberia and I...